If you've been reviewing the Australian property market, but you're still not sure where to buy in 2023 and 2024, then this is the video for you. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the markets within Australia and the capital cities that have the most potential within those cities, the suburbs with the most potential, and then within those suburbs, the exact property types that short, medium, and longer term will not just get great cash flow, but strong capital growth as well. Now to kick things off, let's talk about markets. The most important thing to remember with Australia at the moment is it's not one Australian property market. There are the eight capital cities, all of the major regional markets, and then the smaller regional towns. Now, as I've talked about recently in other videos, I don't particularly like the look of Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, or Hobart at the moment, and I don't like the look of Darwin either, but there are other markets like Brisbane, Perth, and potentially Adelaide, which look extremely strong for the rest of 2023 into 2024, 25 and beyond. Now, the two markets that I'm personally spending most of my time on as an investor at the moment are Brisbane and Perth. Now, the first market I wanted to talk about is Brisbane. And the number one reason in terms of why Brisbane is its longer term history. Now, when I looked at 50 years worth of data from homely.com.au and CoreLogic, what I found is that when you look at the total return divided by the number of years, Brisbane has averaged about 9.7% per annum. Now, if you look at the same 50-year period, Sydney's done about 9.6% and Melbourne's done about 9.5% and then Perth over the same period's done about 8.2%. So contrary to popular belief where everybody focuses on Sydney and Melbourne, Brisbane has had equally strong, if not slightly better history in the last 50 years. Now, the second reason I like Brisbane is the same as everybody else, and that is the coming 2032 Olympic Games. Now, there's been many reports in the likes of the Financial Review, Courier Mail recently, where leading analysts and banks from around Australia have been looking at what could occur for property prices in Brisbane between now and then. Now, in the last article I saw from the Financial Review, the consensus was that they estimate the average suburb will go from around about 600K in many parts of the city to somewhere between 900 and up to 1.2 mil by the Olympic Games with some of the beachside suburbs and inner city suburbs that are currently sitting at about that 7 800K mark rising to between 1.3 and 1.5 mil by the Games. So particularly when we look back at Sydney, between 1997 and 2003, house prices went up 97%. When I look back at the London Olympic Games, house prices in the three, four years leading up went up about 38%. And even in Tokyo, where the Olympics didn't occur properly and people haven't speculated on property in Japan for 20 or 25 years, house prices and unit prices in many of the inner city locations went up by between 20 and 50%. So the Olympic Games certainly have a positive impact, not just in terms of the speculation, but in terms of the jobs, the income, and obviously the infrastructure that stays after the event. Now, the third reason I really like Brizzy at the moment is the population growth since the start of COVID has been absolutely out of control. The city is well on its way to the 5 million people, which is this current size of Sydney and Melbourne. Um, the ABS believes that Brisbane will be at about that 5 million people mark within 20 to 21 years from today. Fourth reason I like Brisbane at the moment is the income growth has been exceptionally strong in recent years and the state, because of the commodities and the mining, has been doing quite well. So if we look at the incomes in Brisbane now, they're higher per household than they are in Melbourne and they're within about 6 to 7% of Sydney now. Now, the second market I like at the moment is Perth. Now, Perth, has often got a bad rap because the last 14 years have been absolutely brutal over there. It's obviously a big mining boom and bust city. Perth is certainly not the sort of market that you want to go rushing into if you're chasing security and long-term consistency. And if we look at the last 15 years, there's been periods where property prices have literally gone up 50% in a couple of years. There's been periods of a decade where prices came down between 20 and 45%, depending on the suburb. We see vacancy rates over there at the moment sitting below 1%, but I've seen vacancy rates over there at 6 to 12%, and people literally having properties that become vacant sit empty for between three and six months in the last five years. So Perth certainly isn't for the faint-hearted, but there are a couple of reasons I really like it at the moment. Now, the one, number one reason is 
about once every cycle, we go through a commodities boom, which is driven off the back of a global construction and infrastructure boom. Now, coming out of COVID, one of the ways that the governments around the world have been focusing on improving the global economy outside of printing shitloads of cash is obviously reinvesting through the public systems around the world in the likes of roads, trains, hospitals, schools, and all of those sorts of things that can get people that aren't employed back into the workforce. Now, since the second year of COVID, many of the commodities that are in the ground over there in WA have gone through extremely strong demand growth and off the back of that price growth. This has resulted in literally hundreds of thousands of high paid workers going over there to WA to capitalize on that. And obviously the mining company is printing massive, massive amounts of profit which is why the GDP in Perth at the moment looks so good. Now, the second reason I like Perth at the moment is it's dirt cheap when you look at history. Now, I've just gone through the process of reviewing over 300 suburbs within 30 kilometers of the CBD. And what I've found is that some of the suburbs in the last 10 years, close to the city and the beach have absolutely kicked ass and literally doubled in value over that time. And there's suburbs directly next to them over the same period of time that over 50 years have done about 8% per annum, but in the last 10 years have done 1, 2, or 3% per annum, which says to me that there are very, very strong opportunities at the moment for those looking for short, medium, and longer-term capital growth based on that history of 8.2% a year. Now, the third reason I like Perth at the moment is similar to Brisbane. The population's growing and is expected within 25 years to be around about the size of Sydney and Melbourne, Obviously, incomes are growing as well over there, um, and the jobs market is extremely strong, as well as the vacancy rates being the lowest in the country at the moment, which is putting significant pressure on rents and pushing them up over there as well. So Brisbane and Perth are the two markets that I like the look of at the moment. Um, I'm not a gambler, so for me personally, I'm mainly focusing on Brisbane, the reason being 75% of Australia's job infrastructure and population growth is going to occur between the Sunshine Coast and Melbourne. So Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane in the next 10, 15 and 20 years. And obviously because Brisbane has achieved such a high average annual return over the last 50 years and outperformed Perth over that period, plus it's a lot more diversified and stable economy. That's where I'm putting my eggs this year personally. Now, the cool thing about both Brisbane and Perth is that they, again, like the Australian market being a series of cities, regional markets, and parts of Australia, these cities of Perth and Brisbane are exactly the same. So there's not one Perth market or one Brisbane market. There is a series of markets within that. Now, both cities have um, like a central business district or a CBD blue chip area. Both of them have blue chip suburbs on the beaches. Both have a north, south, east, and west, and each of those markets should be viewed independently, or at least they are by me when I geek out as much as I do. And within those pockets, there are some incredibly good quality hidden gems. In terms of the rules when looking for a suburb in either Brisbane or Perth this year, it's as simple as buying as close to the city or the beach as you can afford. And then it's about doing your homework. So for me personally, I always look at the 12 month, three year, and 10 year averages in terms of what the market has been doing over that period of time. And what I'm personally looking for is when I look at 400 suburbs in Brisbane each year or 300 in Perth, I wanna analyze them. And what I'm really looking for is suburbs with an average annual growth rate as low as possible in those cities, knowing that the longer term returns have been extremely strong. So what I'm doing there is the exact same Warren Buffett, same thing Warren Buffett does, which is looking for value that has not been priced into the current market and looking for properties with great long-term potential based on history and fundamentals. Now, generally within Perth or Brisbane, there are really just two types of property. There are the extremely blue chip properties that are a little bit more expensive, that are slightly negatively geared with today's interest rates. And then there are the more affordable options, the houses and the townhouses closer to the city, closer to the beach in the undervalued pockets of the city or the undervalued suburbs that represent really good value with extremely strong rent returns. Depending on your financial position, your plan and your goals for the future, plus also what you can borrow will determine which of those markets and which of those property types you play with within each of the cities.
Now, the final thing that I wanted to wrap the video up with is the third point, and that is what are the types of properties that are expected to do well this year and next year? Now, when it comes to me personally, I'm always looking for as much land as possible. If you can afford it, you should always target a house. If you have a limited budget, but you really want to get into the market, then you may be able to consider a high quality townhouse with low body corporate and sinking fund fees in a small block with our crazy amenities like lifts, pools, gyms, saunas, spas, and those types of things. Now, I think there's two types of properties which represent value in the current market. Places that are tenant ready, that are set and forget, that are blue chip, that you don't have to worry about, that are cheaper to buy secondhand than they are to create brand new. And then there's obviously the properties with a small amount of potential for renovation because one thing that I've learned post-COVID is the market is massively, massively valuing, particularly the first time, second time buyer and mums and dads home market, places that are in good condition that they can move into, that they can feel comfortable in, that just in case they get stuck in their home again, feels in line with their values and what they want out of their lives top of that, I also personally like to buy some properties with the potential for upside. That could either be something like a granny flat or a duplex or a subdivision in the future. And in both Brisbane and Perth, there are plenty of extremely good opportunities, whether you're looking to go for more cash flow or the potential to manufacture some value through development. To round things out, I think 2023 through to 2026 is going to look absolutely phenomenal for both pockets of Brisbane and pockets of Perth. Obviously, there's parts of both cities that have absolutely gone nuts since the last GFC, but in both cities, there are hidden gems if you know how to interpret the data and where to look. Now, for those of you seriously considering buying a property in the next 12 months, I'd love to offer you a one-on-one -on -one strategy session. All you need to do is jump over to our website, www.pumpedonproperty.com, click the free strategy session button, and we can talk about exactly where you are today, where you'd like to be longer term. We can talk about the Australian market and the particular suburbs, and then you can take that with a grain of salt and go and absolutely smash it on your own or potentially become one of the extremely small number of clients that we work with each month. But either way, we wish you all the best in the next year. Please subscribe to the channel. Please give us a thumbs up for this video and feel free to share it with whoever you like. We wish you guys all the best. See ya. Woo. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's cool, Yeah. Sweaty, so sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.